I'm halfway through. I've been playing a lot of Khalid, and Gatot's oh, a good yeah. matchup. There you go. Cho, not so much. RSG versus... Cho just cancels your quick sand guard, Aurora. and you getting kicked into a turret doesn't help you many. All right. There's the carry, and we're looking for one more. What's Aqua to play? Aqua to play. Maybe the... Uh, Loi's banned out. Uh, Lilia? Vex. Oh, no, Aurora. Aurora, there you go. Okay. So is there a world that this Cho can still go XP? Yeah. Yeah? Can. But we have we seen Nibor do that? Let me bring up nah, the stats. Nah, I don't, I don't think, so. think so. I don't yeah. think so, bro. There's just like a handful of uh, XP laners that actually played Cho XP. Really big hitters. Like the Arlock, big setters, probably get the get thought. But there's a Roger for the jungle here. Uh-oh. That's a deep cut. It's very, very... He dug deep for that. Yeah, no. Uh, Nibor has n never played... Uh, XP Cho. Yeah, and Light is going to play it. We're going to have to take into consideration Mastery of the Hero as well. Mm -hmm. They don't want to try something they haven't played before. Again, we don't know, but probably, right? So, Index Rating looking really good here for RSG, not going to lie. Uh, negative counter here for Aurora means, you know what, they just want to play their game. Yep, I think a good chunk of that is on the uh, very easy to execute CC. There's four very good sources of CC from RSG that if they get their way, Rene J will have to really catch all of them off guard. There it is. Locked in. Who do you think is coming out on top here, ladies and gentlemen? Let's throw it over to Naisu and Ingen to give us a game on this one. Last chance for the Raiders to save their playoff spot coming into this Welcome season. To Mobile Legends. Up against Aurora coming from their momentum. Welcome to the English Desk. My name is Ingen. Together with me is Naisu. And Naisu, looking at the jungle matchup specifically, yep. Irad with the Ling and Demon Kite, bringing back a hero we haven't seen for quite some time now. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, for a while, you know, Roger was the flavor of, I was going to say the month, but it was like more than a month. Like, it was like the, the first half of the regular season, season even, and even the previous tournaments, but kind of fell off. Back in a position now, though, in the hands of Demon Kite, and it can still work. It's one of those picks that obviously you, you build your lineup around it, and yeah. you know that's what Aurora went with this time. But you're, you're wondering, is it is this lineup going to work for Aurora for game number one against what RSG brought to us? Yeah, and at the same time, uh, we can see Renegade again rocking the Tigreal. We've been seeing Renegade have some. Uh, is that 80% win rate on yeah, the Tigreal? I believe 80%. Uh, Renegade has been versatile all throughout the season, even. Uh, went out with a game using a Diggy. Mathilda, of course, so it's this time it's going to be the Hitman Renegade up against the Raiders. So, so far, looking at the early game, it was a quite uh, a relatively uh, fast game during uh, Series 1, but this time, Aurora has the luxury to be as aggressive as they can because, again, the power spike of a Khalid is in the first five minutes. And when you pick up a Khalid, you know your agenda is to uh, invade the opposing team's junglers, but on the other hand, here comes a potential invade coming in from Aurora. Yeah, they want to put pressure where they can. Again, we're still a little ways, of course, from that turtle take. But, you know, part of this, too, you're kind of, you know, when you when you have to look at things on the, the lineup that they have, how they go through this, the fact that you have Renege, for example, on the Turgir really helps set things up. And it's great that there's an Aurora because you can kind of stop that implosion setup that we see. It's so gonna take a couple shots from here, Rad. Demon Kite will get the turtle. The fight already gonna break out too. Glacial drop down, Bye. still fight gonna ensue. Edward trying to get out, won't be able to. Heals up though. There's the implosion we were talking about, and Edward does stay alive with that heal and the setup coming out from the implosion from Renege. Well, quick sand guard, making quick work off of Irad as he also picks up the kill. The moment that you think Edward Legend Zero was gonna fall down. Just a quick sand guard cast, and at the same time, a kill onto Irad was more than enough for Aurora to establish a good lead. They also got the first turtle, and props to Renegade as well, all throughout that clash. Uh, sticking to Irad, even if this is a link, forcing the retribution onto the purple buff. That's why Aurora has no trade. So right now, for the Raiders, in order to stay alive for this game, they really have to bank and hope that Kosei will be activated later on with this carry. Because with this carry, he can easily burst down the tanky, uh, tanky hero side of Aurora, like Rene Jane Edward. Yeah. But in order to do that, they have to avoid or stop the aggression of Aurora. I feel like we're, we're in a place now, at least in 
as the the shifting sands of the meta happen here, or literally with Khalid popping up more, or you know now even the gold lane has changed quite a bit, where you do have some of these more mages popping up in the gold lane, or even for example like the ruby we saw. When you have this more traditional carry versus Moskov matchup that we saw so much of, it does play a part in it where, yeah, you do have to worry about Domang later on. And, you know, of course, that farming timing. Oh, oh there was a kit there, too. Raging Sandstorms goes in. They're going to fight this. Renegade went down earlier towards that purple buff, so they don't find Nabor in that, but Renegade gets taken out. A lot of pressure on that purple buff. Yeah, Aurora was a bit in too deep towards that purple buff. And again, you get the concept because you have a Khalid that can easily invade, but in that case, it was Yue and Renegade trying to at least force out the purple buff before the turtle spawns. And they just gave up a kill onto Irad, but that was a trade Aurora, I believe, was willing to take. And this time, they're setting themselves perfectly for this potential turtle take once again. Do have to point out, Renegade has his flicker available with the implosion play, but Yue as well, ready to expend that frigid glacier counterattack that they can ensue on the raiders as demon kite works on the turtle that's just gonna be a free one to take demon kite will use the retribution to secure the turtle iran wasn't in the area to actually contest that so now that's two turtles here for rora very clean takes on them and that's the thing you know you you mentioned this earlier on part of what rora is doing part of what renegade is doing is just you know they're comfortable taking some of the risk of yeah let's put renegade here behind enemy lines and, and make them work for, you know, even something as simple as a buff. Yeah, and that's a good sign that you're actually a roamer. Because there's a difference between a good roamer and just merely a setter. And Renegade is doing more than just setting. He's zoning, giving Irad an uncomfortable time in his own jungle, providing a lot of vision for Aurora to counter out the rotation that the Raiders are doing right now. Again, Renegade oh. has his flicker. Wow. Whoa, light. He wanted to go in there to, to go for a pickoff. He ends up getting taken out. That was a quick one for Aurora as they tried to work on the middle lane as well. Again, here comes the Contest trying to steal the purple buff of Ira. This is not a good sign. If you're a Ling, at this point, five minutes in, you're already out of your purple buff. Yeah, they the the way this whole like 30 seconds win, I mean, Aurora did so much uh, to just stop and slow things down. Edward. Once again, this is the thing about Khalid, just heals up with the Sand Garden. Now, the focus here looks to be on top. Rora wants to get the Tier 1 top side. And they're going to put the pressure here. Light to answer. Multiple members there, but they know Renegade's here as well, so they can't fully commit. Yeah, that, that's the threat of having a Renegade with the Tigreal. But look at this, 1v1 between Edward and Irad. And even if, in terms of damage, Irad has more, Edward is going to continue spamming the quick Sand Garden, just regenerate his health. I didn't even see him recall even once so far this he's pretty, game. He's pretty much got, I mean, he's got Thunderbelt. He's got some steel pants, you know, at, steel at this pants. point. You're not really going to be able to kill him unless, yeah, maybe your Kosei pops the damage, has that Light. penetration Light. through. Light, there's the Sandstorm we were talking about, too, to keep him alive. So Edward will just sit there and gets a ton of attention, and all this is worth it for Aurora because now they're three for three for the Turtles. This is where you see Aurora really shines. Even if the game's sort of like stalemate wherein there's not much action, they know how to extend the lead as the Spear of Whoa. Destruction will connect. Gets the Purify out. There's the Flicker, the Implosion to the toss-up oh, under the turret. Kosei goes down, and now Yue looking to pick up a kill on Light. One hit, has the little bit of shield, so he'll be fine. Still surviving it all. Once again, Sights here on the purple buff, putting the pressure on Irad. He will get it with Retribution, but Rora's done enough damage already. It's just, it's these small wins and victories just stacking up now at this point. Uh, at this point, I don't think that was a small win for Domeng. I mean, oh, from the top lane, connecting the Spear of Destruction onto the bottom lane to bring down uh, Kosei, plus the assistance of Renegade with the implosion. Even if Kosei had the Purify, they were able to still shut him down and let this lead balloon up to 4.1k. And so far, we've been seeing more purple buff fights yeah. compared to turtle clashes. So this is, a, this is a sign that Aurora's really on the lead right now as they try to work on the middle lane as well against five members. But look at Renegade. Renegade. There's no way he pulls this off. He's going to get spotted out. He's going to go for light, though. He'll pick up light. I'm sorry, Whoa. the Guardian going to be dropped down, too. Domang firing off from the back side. This is all around the orange buff, too. Edward jumps in, still fighting in between the two turrets. They'll get the passive out. 
Spirit Destruction will not land, but right now, Rora takes even more from RSG. And that's a sign that you're in the driver's seat. Ren and Jay in too deep. Implosion play onto Light, despite him connecting under just expanding the implosion onto a roamer. That was more than worth it because they know that Yue has the Frigid Glacier ready to be expended. And in that case, when RSG resulted to a counter attack, Yue just popped out the Frigid Glacier, catches two, brings down Nimbra as well. And again, this is the purple fight clash we're waiting for. Well, the pressure once again, Light taking a brunt of the damage from Domang. They have to get the support here. Whoa. They're going to be able to crunch down to the choke point on Rora. They're going to pick up Renegade, looking to fight back as Irad gets yeah. a double. Light falls down in the exchange, and now they're going for Domang. Domang fires off, but won't be able to follow through on the Spear of Destruction. Meanwhile, Demon Kite fighting off Nibor here with Yue. Jumps on in with a Lycan Pounce and will claw in back. It's a two for three trade. And uh, just like that, RG still able to somewhat salvage that moment, despite the aggression of Aurora again, going for the purple buff of Irad. And this time, it looks like, even if Aurora got the three turtles, wow. RSG will get the Lord. But here comes Demon Guide, though. RSG, they don't waste any time. They'll just take everything they did, and they'll get the Lord. So this is a great swing in their favor here. And this is the luxury of having an Aqua, Aqua, Aurora. Aurora. Aqua Aurora. Again, you see the aggression of Aurora. They started things off, but with Aqua's uh, Frigid Glacier connecting to at least three members, it was easy for Irad to dish out the Defiant Sword to the members of Aurora to bring down two at least. Although Demon Kai was able to answer back with one kill, RSG got more kills. That's why they were able to get this first Lord. And just like that, from a 5k gold lead, they were able to trim it down, down to half. And if you're RSG, you really want to utilize as much as possible this first Lord. Not, not, not just, uh, even if you don't get an inhibitor turret, at least clean up all the outer turrets like what Irad is doing right now up top. We can play around this Lord pushing in bottom side. They're going to force Aurora back. So this is RSG playing on the momentum with that Lord push in. It's going to get cleared out really quickly though, because again, they've got great clear speed here with this lineup from Aurora. So we'll see what more RSG gets. Spear Destruction going to be used just to spot them out, force them out further. So right now, Rora honestly doesn't lose too much. Yeah. But they did, though. Uh, but RSG was able to successfully again diminish the gold lead of Aurora down to 1.6k this time. And it looks like Light is playing more comfortably compared to the first five minutes. He's able to zone out now. He's able to, you know, freely roam around, try to get, get those pickups. Maybe up against Doming, Yue, or even Demon Kite. So this time it looks like the Raiders are ready to punch back, fight back, 5v5. Again, we've been seeing more purple buff fights compared to neutral objectives, uh, especially in the Lord Pits. But this time with RSG, with how they're playing, they can actually contest for the Lord and utilize again Irad for those split pushes to have uh, some sort of an advantage towards the macro game. I think both teams really can just play around the side lane push if they want to again. Mozkov known for that. Ling obviously can do that like we mentioned with Irad, but they're going to have to face this fight. Right There's the implosion from the hit. Man going to be able to find two. Light's the first one to go down. They do get trapped into the glacier as Edward to follow. And now Irad in trouble as he gets just poked down, taken out. Now one of the turret. Demon kind of on the chase for Aqua, but Aqua still holds on to the passive. They get the tier two turret, and now they'll make their way to take some resources get ready for this Lord 20 seconds away. And once again, the Hitman doing Hitman things, making sure to connect the implosion onto two members of RSG. Even though they got the trade onto Edward, it was more than worth it because they were able to take down Nibor and Irad and uh, preventing RSG from potentially setting themselves Nibor up for a, a Lord take. And as we look at the Infinix instant replay, look at the patience coming in from Renegade, just really waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. Paired up with the Raging Sandstorm for Edward, and even though he was caught up with the Frigid Glacier, he was able to add uh, a still crowd control, but look at oh. this, Light goes in! Light went in, he flickered in. He got punished again, having a really tough time here on this show in game number one. So right now, Rora, knowing they don't have Light, this is a clear signal for them to just take this Lord here. Okay. So Rora again establishing a good gold lead, 5.2k. 
It looks like it's going to be an uncontested lure. In oh, Domang. Oh, Domang. Gets the Tempest Blades out. He's forcing the fight. Goes in with a spear of destruction as well. Irad able to get away. Good attempt there from Domang, but still, ultimately, it's that Lord going in the hands of Rora. Even if Domang wasn't able to take down Irad, he was able to foil the plan of Orshi to just, let's just go for the trade instead. Yeah. Again, Aurora still has a second turret uh, down bottom. And you know the plan of the Ling, the plan of the mechanic, was to just really bring down at least one turret to try and look for a trade, but Domeng says no. I'm not afraid to get outplayed by a Ling as soon as we get the Lord. And here comes the potential push coming in from Aurora as they manage the minions. They're gonna take away once again the purple buff of Irad. They have minions down bottom, middle lane, and the Lord marches up top. Renegade again has the flicker, has the implosion play. It's gonna be a matter of setups between two teams. Yeah, Yue also has that Frigid Glacier going to force the fight. Win of Nature picked up by Kusei. They're going to need it, but an implosion again coming out from Renage. Forcing the fight under it all. Nivor taken out first. Spirit Destruction won't be able to land. They get stopped by the tracks from the Frigid Glacier from Aqua. Still dealing with the Lord here. Now working on the mid turret. Rora full force still. No one goes down. Defensive items picked up. They're going to force the fight under it all. And they will work on the base before finishing the fight as they take game number one. Just like that, the Hitman strikes back once again. Picking off three with a good flicker implosion play. 